O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Lord, lead me to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Ashes in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord,
The Old Testament reading for Holy Thursday is from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentil of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until morning. Anything that remains until morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste, it is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. As a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistles from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some of you have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, 
What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. God is most high. None is above him. No one is more exalted than him. So his eyes can look only down. There's no need for him to look up, only down. His eyes always look downward, earthward, toward you. He sees you as those who are in the depths. Psalm 14, the Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. What does God say when he looks down on you? He sees us staring at our belly buttons. We are self-interested people. We are what Luther calls navel gazers by nature. Or if you prefer, we are Narcissus, in love with our own reflection. We don't look up to God, and we don't look towards our neighbor. Even if we look up, it's only to the stuff of this world. We constantly strive to get ahead, to move forward, to climb the ladder. Everyone strives after that which is above him, after honor, power, wealth, knowledge, life of ease, says Luther. We are selfish, and our whole lives, at home and work and even church, are lived by whatever makes me happy. Again, Luther 
At the same time, no one is willing to look down into the depths of their own poverty, disgrace, squalor, misery, and anguish. Even when we do look at ourselves or consider ourselves, we are dishonest. We aren't willing to expose ourselves, to be turned inside out. We won't confess our sin in anything but a general way, poor and miserable. But let's not talk about it. Let's not talk about our sin, not before the pastor and not before each other either. It's too ugly. We're ashamed. We're disgusted. Now, it's really madness, but far easier to cover it up, to cover over your sin rather than just simply tell the truth. Madness, but easy. We make believe we live on a mountaintop paradise of holiness and righteousness, while our lives are really messy and messed up just as much as our neighbor in the house next door to us. We pretend that we are something that we are not as Christians. And to make it all more palatable, this sin nature, we keep looking towards greener pastures, a better life, self-improvement. We try to strengthen our resolve that we can improve ourselves, which is really just one big lie. So at the beginning of the season of Lent, we heard, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. These words are put into our ears and our heart to end the lies full stop. If you are dust, then confess yourself to be. That's what repentance is. Drop the make-believe and confess the reality. When God looks down, what does he see? They have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good, no, not one. Psalm 14 and Romans 3. So be honest tonight. Confess the truth. Why do you want to look at your navel anymore anyway? Who can love what they see when they look in the mirror? No one. We're crazy. But over our sin, over the hole that we keep digging deeper and the hearts of darkness that we keep hidden from ourselves, from our pastor, from fellow Christians, from our friends, and naively, we think we can hide our hearts from God. So we want to look away. Don't. Don't look away. Don't look in. Don't look up. Look down. For in looking down, you are ironically seeing yourself as God sees you. God who has, only has eyes for the lowly. In looking down, you will not only see who you are, who you really are, but you will also see who God really is for you. God is not this kind of distant deity who gazes down from above as we hear on earth wallow in our pit of misery, of shelter at home, of despair, of hopelessness. No, he is God who joins to you who himself is like you in every way. He not only has eyes for the lowly, but he shares flesh and blood with you, the lowly. The most high God is incarnate as most low, the suffering servant, as we'll hear tomorrow. But to our text tonight, John 13, he rose from supper laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself, 
And after that, he poured water into a basin, began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. He washes your feet. The very fingers that crafted the universe now scrub the jam in between man's toes. The hands that put the stars and the planets in place and painted the heavens with wonder washes our feet painted with the filth of dirt and sweat. The one before the whole heavenly host bow now gets on his knees to serve you. And in so doing, he gives a humble epiphany to you, a revelation of who he is for you. He is the God who makes his glory known in lowliness, in suffering, in servitude. He is a God who is the God who is so poor that he must borrow a donkey just to ride into Jerusalem. He is a God who slaves away at washing his disciples' feet. He is a God who gives his cheek to betraying Judas, to the blows of the soldiers, to the slapping hand of the high priest, to the spitting of the Sanhedrin. He is the God who gives his head to a crown of thorns, his hands and his feet to spikes, his side to a spear. He is the God whose glory is revealed at his cross, where he stoops low to heal. He is the God, your God, who embraces rejection, shame, torture, and even death for you. And here's why. That's who he is. That's simply who God is. God who is love. There's no greater love than this, that one man lay down his life for his friends. God is love who loves you by giving himself to you. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gives you everything you need for your faith in life. And when the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Psalm 14, 7. Now Jesus doesn't only wash your feet. As he says, he washes you clean through and through, body and soul, by the holy washing in his name. He fills the font with water from his pierced side and kneels low to wash you of all your sin once and for all. He does not only give his body to the executioners and his blood to the dust beneath him, but he gives his body into your mouth and his blood into the chalice for you to drink into the dust of your flesh. And receiving his life-giving body and blood, you are transformed, changed from the lowly son of dust of Adam to the adopted son of the most high God, the new Adam. Now, every kind of natural food that we take into our bodies is transformed by our bodies into, well, energy and nutrients. It's broken down, consumed, and it becomes part of us. But the supper of our Lord is different. This food transforms you into what it is, not the other way around. You, receiving his body and blood, become what you receive. You, the church, then become the body of Christ together on the blood of Christ. You are joined to him and he to you in an inseparable union, communion. Everything that is the almighty God's is yours in Christ Jesus. And for this reason, we hunger and thirst to receive Christ's body and blood together 
as one holy communion. We hunger and thirst to be forgiven and strengthened and nourished in that body and blood that he has promised us. But we are also now pilgrims, or better yet, exiles. Fasting for a time from this body and blood until such time as we can receive it together again and celebrate our Lord's resurrection again together with his body and blood given for us to eat and to drink. Again, the psalmist, when the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Psalm 14. When the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, we wait, we hope, we long to receive again, again together his body and blood for our forgiveness, life, and salvation. Because we know that in so receiving, we receive everything that he is. We become like him. We are joined together in him into one holy communion, the mystical body of Jesus. Because in that sacrament, and indeed in all the ways that he serves us with forgiveness and life, he exalts the lowly and fills the hungry with good things. So be patient. The Lord will restore his people. He will bring you back into this fellowship. He will once again feed you with his body and blood. And in the meantime, you are baptized. You are a child of God. You have his every promise, knowing that no matter what happens today or tomorrow, you are in Christ and Christ is yours. And that nothing can separate you. Nothing can tear you apart. Not sickness, not disease, not job loss, not poverty or weakness. Nothing can tear you away from God who is for you in Jesus. The most low, the suffering servant for you. Thanks be to Jesus in his holy name. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he
Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord God, we humbly confess to you that we deserve your fatherly chastisement for our sins. Yet we earnestly implore you for your name's sake to spare us in this time of disaster, restrain all harmful powers and all illness, and help your suffering people, that your word may be declared faithfully and without hindrance, and that we, amending our sinful lives, may walk in safety and peace according to your holy commandments. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
has hurt. 